So one of the mounts I have used extensively over the years with the P900 is this Skywatcher as GTI mount. It is an out azimuth mount, but you can also load firmware that will let you use it as an equatorial mount. And I have shown that in previous videos. This is the P900. And what I found is that by using a counterweight, the balance is directly over the point of rotation. And that just makes the tracking much smoother. The mount can be controlled with an app or with a program on a Windows PC. I'm happy to report that just yesterday, Skywatcher released new software that allows this mount to be used for satellite tracking. That's what we're going to have a look at today. So this is the Skywatcher website, which is where you need to go in order to download the firmware for the satellite tracking. You can find this site by typing in skywatcher.com into the address bar. If you go to our product, mounts and tripods, then multi-purpose mounts, you can see more information about the ASGTI mount. It is available as a standalone purchase or in a number of packages with different types of telescopes. In order to update the firmware, you need to go to support, software and firmware, and down to motor controllers. So from here, you will need two downloads. The first one is the motor controller firmware loader. This is the Wi-Fi version because the ASGTI mount is operated by Wi-Fi. So you'll need that program to actually load the firmware. Then you will need one of the version 3.22 firmwares. This is the standard one. And then you have the dual mode version, which also lets you use the mount in equatorial mode. And that's the one I'm using. So 3.22 and the Wi-Fi motor controller firmware loader. You're also going to need the SynScan app, the Windows version, and also the new program, which was released yesterday, the Satellite Tracker application version 0.18. So download all those onto your Windows computer and I'll show you what to do with it. So I'm now on my Windows PC and the first thing we're going to look at is how to update the firmware. So you need to unzip the motor controller firmware loader and the motor controller firmware version 3.22. Once you've done that, run the firmware loader program. You'll see that window. Now, obviously you have to be connected to the mount and that is a Wi-Fi connection. So once you're connected to the mount, you can hit motor controller version and that will test what version is on the mount at the moment. You can see that mine is already updated, but prior to that, it was showing 3.20. To update the firmware, you then browse to the file for the new firmware, and then you can hit update. And that takes a number of seconds. Once that has completed, just recycle the power on your mount and you should be good to go. So the next step is to unzip the satellite tracker folder and inside that folder, you will find the satellite tracker itself plus another zip file for a program called Previsat. So you'll need to unzip that and run the installation file. When you have completed that, you will see an icon for Previsat on your desktop. Before you run that, make sure that you disconnect from the Skywatcher mount and you connect to the internet. Because when Previsat runs, it needs to download additional files. So the interface looks a little daunting initially, but it is quite straightforward. The first thing you want to do is select your location. Here you can see Perth. To do that, you need to go to the Options tab, and Australia was not there by default, but if you right mouse click on World and Download, it will download a list of countries. If you then download within Australia, it will give you a number of city options. And here I have selected Perth and Hillary's, which is a suburb north of Perth. Going back to the main tab, you can see that my location 
is currently Perth. Now the next thing you need to do is update the TLE data for the satellites. So come across to the Tools tab and by default it selects the common satellites. I change that to all of them and then go Update Now. And this is why you need to be connected to the internet. Now it's showing no TLE updated and that is because I have the current data anyway but it's just going through the process of checking. What you can also do is select the ISS Transits tab and update the ISS TLE data. So that's updated. Now we go to the telescope tab and Skywatcher tells us that we need to set this output step to 50 or 100. So I have selected 100 as you can see. So all you need to do now is decide which satellite you wish to track. This list allows you to view the position of the satellites on the map. So if we select the ISS, it shows the current position. If the satellite is currently in view, you get that chime sound. And this window allows you to select multiple satellites simply for viewing on the map. Under the telescope tab, this list only allows you to select one, and that is the satellite that you will load to the mount for tracking. So let's just pick the ISS. What we now need to do is generate the positions. And you can have a look at the results. And these are the commands that it will send to the tracking mount to track the ISS position itself. So we've now generated the file. We need to connect to the mount once again and run the satellite tracker. So we have now reconnected to the mount via the Wi-Fi and what we need to do is run the SynScan Pro Windows app in addition to the satellite tracking program itself. I have shortcuts on my desktop to both of those. So we'll run the SynScan app and we can connect to the mount. Connect in Alt As mode Hibernate data present, restore, so yes. I'm going to now load the satellite tracker and connect. What we now do is load the satellite file that we generated earlier. There it is, and load. We can update the clock in the mount by pressing this button. Now it's showing that the tracking is going to start in 2 hours and 21 minutes. But what we can do is test this with a test run. Select that box. The test will start in 20 seconds. So it's going to simulate the tracking of the ISS based on the data. If we hit start, the mount is now slewing to the start position and then the tracking will begin. I'm just showing you this on the computer screen for the moment, but I'll also film that with my phone to show you how the mount is actually tracking. So here we can see the position of the mount as it simulates the tracking of the ISS for this pass. And it gives you a very precise time remaining. This particular pass is not that exciting because it doesn't get very high above the horizon. So for the demonstration, showing the mount actually moving, I'll pick another satellite that goes directly overhead. We'll just cancel that. Cancel. And if we did nothing else, 
without selecting test run and just hit start, the mount will go to the initial position and just wait there for 2 hours and 19 minutes until the satellite is visible. So let's see what that looks like when we're viewing the mount itself. So for the visual demonstration, I have selected a satellite that has a fairly quick pass and reaches a high elevation in the sky, and that way we will see the mount definitely moving. The satellite is Aeolus. It is a 9 minute pass and it reaches 61 degrees elevation. So I'm going to generate the positions for that pass. And now I'm going to go into the satellite tracker program and open that next file. So there it is. And what we can then do is start. Now it's showing that the pass will not occur for 4 hours and 37 minutes. But we can do a test run. So now I grab my phone and I'll show you what that looks like on the mount itself. So there's the mount pointing north at the home position. And what we can now do is a test run on this satellite track. So the mount is moving initially to the starting position. Now it's a 10 minute pass and initially the motion on the mount is very slow until the elevation angle starts to increase significantly. So it's still moving to the starting position. And it will now begin tracking. And there you can see the elevation angle is increasing slowly. So what you can do at this point is just fast forward until it becomes obvious that the mount is actually moving. So it's now up to 12 degrees elevation, starting to move a little faster now.
now up to 23 degrees elevation. And as you can see, reaching its maximum elevation, the motion on the mount is quite apparent. And then the motion slows down again as the satellite moves away from overhead. So well done Skywatcher. Thanks very much for this. I look forward to using it out in the field.